so glad that we have that father we can run to and uh, find comfort you know even you know we might be ashamed and just uh maybe embarrassed of sins or just feeling like a failure in life but we can always run to our father and with uh, he's got arms open wide and um it's great Walking around these walls 
Good to have each and every one of you here, uh, and those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we actually get into the message, why don't we go to the Lord in word of prayer. Father in heaven, we bow in your presence. We thank you today for this day. We thank you for all the blessings in life in which you have given unto each and every one of us, even though we are so undeserving of the least of the things in which you have done. Still, you, you love us just the same, and you, and you give unto us freely. Father, I pray that as we go into this message, that, that if there be anyone here this morning that, that, you know, they're just struggling, I pray that you would give them strength, give them uh, the ability to, to carry on and, and still believe, Heavenly Father, that you are still there and you will always be there and you will never fail us. Father, I just thank you for uh, the life in which you've given unto me to live. I pray that I will live it to your honor and glory, that all the things that I do will be, do be done for you. Father, I pray that also if there be one here, here who hears the message that does not know Jesus as their personal Savior, that today they might come to know him before it's everlasting too late. And Father, we will give you all the praise because you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning's message is entitled Driven to Hope. And I, I had an illustration which I was going to use because there, we, we used to play uh, on Wednesday nights, we used to play games, right? Uh, during the summertime, the kids are out of school, we, we play games. And one of the games which we got, got to be playing was, uh, I don't know what it was called, Where Are You Going? And it was a taxi driver, and you would hop into the taxi and, and, ride, and, and tell them where you were going. But you couldn't tell, the, tell them the, the name of the city or the place you were going. You could only describe it and hope that they would guess it. Well, I was going to do that, but I didn't want to get too carried away because we got a lot of information to go through in this. But the fact of, of the matter is, is there are things that drive us in life, right? And what you hope in the end that what is really driving you is that the Lord is driving you, that, that, he, that he is guiding the places in which you go and, and how you handle the things in which you handle. The message is about hope uh, because I believe that there are times, and, and whether anybody wants to admit it or not, there are times in which our hope is just smashed. It's, it's, just, it's just beaten up, and, and we're still trying to hold on, hold on to, to what God has promised and, and know that he is going to come through in the very end. Uh, but at the moment, at the present time, it doesn't seem like that. And so our hearts are heavy. Our, our troubles are real, and we are, we are struggling. We pray to God, and we pray that, that God would deliver in this situation. And sometimes the answer is not going to be in the affirmative. It's not going to be exactly the way that we want it. Sometimes it's going to be no. And that's what we're going to, to look at this morning is how that God, in many ways, uh, he allows us to go through certain things to build in us the character in which he wants for our lives. It may not be easy. It may be tough. It may be a hard thing in which we are actually going through. But God, in his wisdom, knows what's best for our lives. We, we got a lot of scriptures that I want to talk about. Now, if you grab one of the papers, let me just deal with that for a second. If you grab one of the papers, my copier, my printer is just going wacko. Uh, I can't get it to align itself, and therefore everything looks fuzzy. You might be better off opening your Bibles this morning uh, and having a better view of what it is that we're reading uh, because, like I said, it hurts your eyes to have to try to read through the, 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 the page itself. In Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 18, the scripture says, Who against hope believed in hope, talking about Abraham, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. In Romans, the fifth chapter, in verse 3, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And lastly, in Proverbs, the 13th chapter, verse 12, it says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. 
There is probably no thing more grievous to each and every one of us to have high expectations of a certain thing, that maybe you're introduced to a, a promise that, that, that you've been looking for and you've been hoping in and you've been wanting to see it happen, and yet, basically, it hasn't happened. It's delayed, and that's what, what he talks about. That hope, when it is delayed, it causes us great anguish. Matter of fact, hope deferred or delayed makes the heart sick and grievous, distressed, and irritated. And I don't know if you've ever experienced all those, those emotions and those feelings that go along with the hope in which we might have in what God has promised. Because we, we do our very best uh, to try to maintain a certain position in life, a certain way about ourselves, to continue to, to live in faith of what God has promised, not wanting to let go, not wanting to give up, not wanting to, to quit on what God has promised, because we know what God has said that God will fulfill. Yet we're human. And as humans, when, when our, our hope is delayed, it has not come yet. It has not arrived. It has, has not uh, come to fruition. It makes, it makes the, the life a little bit more difficult. And so as, as we look into it, and we're going to actually look into it through the life of David just for a, 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 during a period of his, his, his life, how that he was dealing with what God had said, because what God had said unto him was in the negative, but he had still hoped for the best. So how did David deal with that? How did, how did he overcome? How did he stay faithful? On the other hand, when hope finally arrives, uh, it's like entering into the garden of God, because it's a tree of life, that all of a sudden, that which was missing, that which was lacking, that which was delayed is here. And all of a sudden, what we were hoping and what we, what we believed in, we now have. When the, des when the desire does come, it puts man into a sort of paradise, a tree of life, the garden of God. David's hope, Second Samuel, it's a long reading, but... but see where, where it comes from. And we all know what David had done, the sin in which he had committed. Matter of fact, if we just look at it for just a, just a second and, and see that David carefully tried to hide it away as, as best as he possibly could. And each and every step of the way, David, David was working this situation, trying to make sure that he would not be found out by anybody else. And so when he first commits a sin, he... he, he and finds out that uh, Uriah's wife is with child, he calls for Uriah to come back, hoping that, that he would go in uh, under her and, and this could still be concealed, it could still be pushed to the side, it could still be a, a secret that he could keep from all people. But that didn't happen because Uriah, being the man that he was, decided that he was going to stay there at the doorstep. Why should I be not in the battle when my, my fellow soldiers are there fighting? Why am I here? Why am I protected? Why, am I, why do I have it easy? So he sat at the door. Well, that was a problem for David because now all of his, his secret could still be made known. You know, And so he sent Uriah off into war and told told the commander, said, now I want you to put him at the forefront of, of, the, of the battle, and when a certain time comes, I want you to withdraw from him. And what had happened is Uriah was put to death. David, all along the way, believed that he had this thing pretty well hidden. It was pretty well covered up. It was, it was, it was uh, swept under the rug, so he wasn't really too worried about it. But then here comes Nathan, right? That's what most people think. Anyhow, here comes the preacher, the preacher's here, and all of a sudden, he, here's our problem going to be exposed. And so he did. Uh, Nathan told him exactly that, that he was the man. And one, one of the things that I realized, that there has to come a point in time in all of our lives that we realize it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It only matters what God knows and what God thinks and how God feels about the situation. If we line ourselves up to where we are right in the sight of God, then that's the best that we possibly can do. But when we try to hide things from people, understand that it's not necessarily going to go 
the way that we want. So David's high hopes. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, we're going to begin in verse 15. It says, And Nathan departed unto, the, unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, uh, and he was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him and raise, uh, to raise him from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will, he be, how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house. And when he required, uh, required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said the, his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while he was alive. And when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. And I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And so Nathan ex exposed the sin of David. You know, that it is said that in between the time of Nathan talk, telling David of what his sin was and, and then him fasting and, and, and praying unto God that the child might live, that during that period of time, David had, had penned Psalm 51, and, which is his, which is his uh, confession of his sin and his asking of forgiveness to God for the thing in which he had actually done, that, that David had penned that during that period of time, uh, which kind of shows unto us that David himself was still seeking Forgiveness, even though Nathan had told him, God has forgiven you. You know what it makes me realize, and I, and I don't know if you're, you'll be there with me, that this is where I am many times, and I, I continue to somewhat fall back into it, only to try to recover. And that is the hardest uh, person to seek forgiveness from is your own self. That... You will always go back in your mind and say, if I'd only done this, if I had only done that, if, if, I, if I had been in this place at this time, or maybe if I had just never left the place that I had left, could, could, and it, could this have all turned out differently? Could it, could it have changed? Could it have been better? Those are the questions. But David, trying to hide his sin, was, was probably the bigger part of his problem just not confessing it, just not owning it, and just not taking it before God. Galatians in the 6th chapter, verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That God knew. And I, I want to believe that God knowing is what should bring us comfort. Because when we can finally get to that place where we realize that what God knows, what God, that God sees, that, that we won't worry so much what other people are thinking, but we'll take it straight to the Lord and, and acknowledge it before Him and seek the forgiveness in which we need for the situation that we have gotten ourselves into. The thing in which David was dealing with was, was his child, that God had touched the child, and the child became sick, sick unto death. This is the situation. This is the problem. And I kind of want to 
remind you just a little bit of the, of, of the pathway in which God talks about that, that this takes, right? From where it comes from his scriptures. In the scriptures, what it tells us is this, that it begins in a place of, of tribulation. And tribulation then moves on into uh, experience. And then the experience leads us to, no, tribulation leads to patience. Patience leads to experience. Experience leads to hope. Hope leads to love. That we're, we're in here somewhere. We may be at this moment in time just like David was, right in that spot of tribulation, that trouble, that, that turmoil in, in which we, we are dealing with. It may be that we're dealing with a loss of job. It may be dealing with the, with the loss of a loved one. It may be that we're, we're, we're dealing with, you know, uh, just life itself and the way that everything's been closed down. Maybe somewhere along the way, we're, we're dealing with the trouble. We're dealing with the problem. We're, we're dealing with, with this thing. And, and God is saying unto us, okay, I'll help you. Be patient, right? That's the hardest thing. It's, it's hard to, to not want that quick fix. It's, the, it's hard not to get to that place where, God, I, I need you now. I, I need your help. I need your aid now. Well, he is there. He is helping. He's just saying be patient because it hasn't, it hasn't worked its all in you yet. And so be patient. And then I see David as David is laying prostrate on the ground not eating, that David is experiencing it. it what, what, what he's going through, it's hit hard. It's, it's there. It's real. And we've all gone through experience. We've all, we've all been in that position where experience becomes real and, and, and the hopes in which we have, they're, de they're delayed. They're, they're, they're there, but they're delayed. So as David is, is trying his best to, to, to hold on to his faith, to continue on with his hope and pray unto God, God, help this child. One of the things that worked in David's life is all of a sudden his compassion towards this child becomes very real. And those who are of a penitent heart, they will be compassionate. And I, I want you to understand this because one of the things that, that may go underlooked as far as the story is concerned is this well-intentioned group of people that come to try to raise him up from his place, right? That, that people come alongside of you and all of a sudden they begin to set telling you, okay, you, 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 you've dealt with it, you've grieved, now it's time to get up. It's time to get up and it's time to move on. It's time to, to take, get back out to living once again. And yet, you may not be ready. You may not be in that place where you're ready to be able to let go of the thing in which you are actually dealing with because God hasn't made you ready yet. That in, in God's good time, He'll take you from the place of experience to, to, the, to the place where you, you can actually really now begin to see that God was in it all along the way. David wasn't ready. The elders came to him. They tried to pick him up, and they said, come on, David, it's time to get up. It's time to eat. And David's saying, no, I'm not ready. And it's okay because one of the things I think that we have learned over the, over the years is that grief does not go away. It's a, it's a thing which many times comes back upon you and begins to haunt you. And, you, and so you'll deal with it, but, you'll, but how we deal with it really is about who is driving it. See, if I'm driving my grief just by myself, just to be grieving, you know, that's not, a, that's not a healthy thing. But if in my grief I am allowing God to drive it, then I can, I can in, with patience, wait upon him to, to bring me to a place where he can pick me up and he can move me on. Child, sick unto death. And you know what you'll see is that because David was dealing with this the way that he was actually dealing with it, that 
David for a while believed that, that everything that was happening to him was because God was angry with him. And it might have been that, that God was angry with the sin, but he loved David. See, sometimes we get lost there. Sometimes we, we forget the fact that God loves that's, here's, here's where my fast track is, by the way. To get from the place of the tribulation to love, if I could get boom, boom, then I'd be okay, right? If I could be sheltered in the love of God from the, from the time of my trouble all the way through, that I could be in that place, then I'd be okay. But I got to go through these things to get me to that place where all of a sudden I realize then in the forgiveness of God, there is no shame. That his love surrounds me. His love protects me. His love is driving me. David fasted, thinking God was angry. Think about it this, this way. The child died after seven days. On the eighth day, they circumcised their, their, their boys. On the eighth day, he, you know, he'd been sealed in the covenant that had been made. He died on the seventh day. Outside of the covenant, uh, outside of the seal. So you could see where David might think, man, God's mad at me. It's hard to go through life thinking God is angry. It's really hard. I, and I, I'm, I'm going to guess that we've all probably been there, done that. But it's hard to, to rationalize with inside of our, our lives that we could have done something that could cause God to turn against us, to be angry with us. Look. I'm, I'm fully expecting that, that, that God is going to turn against America unless America gets, gets right. Because right now we are so wrong. And we have seen him move against nations before. And what would, what, what would stop him from moving against our nation with the things that are going on in our society? But now as an individual, David would pray from time to time. And say unto God, God, don't be angry with me in your wrath. Because he felt it. He experienced it. Driven to hope. When the child was sick, he prayed, he fasted, just in case God would move. And, and in his forgiveness... Let the child live. That was his hope, right? I mean, everything else comes, be, comes from this one thing. I mean, we'll talk, we've talked about his sin, but from this child being sick, this, this illness was, which was unto death, and the fact that he had told Nathan to tell unto David, your child is not going to live. And yet, it, hoping against hope, David would, would, would pray unto God, and he would fast, and, and he would try every way that he possibly could to get God to, to move. Just perhaps God will, will, in his forgiveness, allow the child to live. And so here we are, right? Here we are, because this, that, that's real. That's real for you. It's real for me. It's, it's hard. And... and and while, other, while I'll tell you that there are good-intentioned people who will try to help you along the way, you've got to let God do God's work in, in your life. You've got to let Him bring you along, because if He brings you along, then, then it'll, it'll develop something that is right, that is good. It's, 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 it's hard to live in, in a world where there is so much trouble, so much death, so much problems. But, but this is our world. This is where we live. Hope in a hopeless situation. Faith believing that God could if God chose to. Right? That's a hard one. And, and I'm just honest with you, that, that's the hard one. Knowing that God can if God chose to. 
All things are possible. David believed that God could save this child if God chose to. Well, David remained laying prostrate on the ground. And while he fasted, he would seek for an answer from God, one that he hoped would be in the affirmative. I read somewhere where, where somebody had written, you know, it's, 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 it's a good thing not to make, make your hopes too high, right? Bring, bring your hopes down to reality so that when, when your hope doesn't get answered the way that you want it to, you're not, you're not devastated. And yet at the same time, I think we're all in, in, in this life uh, saying that we want the best that we possibly can have. And so our, our hopes are high. We elevate them. But then we will also, in time, have to deal with the reality that not everything that we want is everything that we get. Sometimes we just have to accept for what it is and know that God is working. He, he has never stopped working. Faith to patience, patience to experience, experience uh, to hope, and hope to the love that leaves us unashamed. There's where we want to be. There are times that I just get tired of beating myself up over situations that have, that have come to pass. Hope that during, around the next corner lies the very thing that my heart desires. But today, I'll be happy with where I'm at with God, knowing that God has, give, has forgiven me that's where David should have been, right? Knowing that God has forgiven him. Notice that when David gets back up, things change. But he had to let God bring, get him back up. He had, he had allowed God to move in a direction to help him with the situation. And until that time, grieve. It's okay. And it, and I say that to, to anybody that, that might be hurting in, in, in any situation that you've gone through in this life. Grieve. Pour, pour out your soul to God and allow God to, to heal the brokenness that is in your life because really only God can. The rest of us, we are well-intended friends who will be there if we can to help in whatever the situation might be that you're going through. We don't have all the answers. We just have a heart that, that is moved by God. David hoped for better days. In 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, verse 23, it says, But now he is dead. Reality. That, that soaks in, that, that takes hold. But now he is dead. So he says, Wherefore should I fast? See, I've done that. I've been there. As long as a child was alive, I, I, I was there in that place, pleading before God that if he chose to, if he would, that he would spare the child his life. But notice what David says again in verse 23. He says, I, can I bring him back? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. One day, We'll meet together. That will go to that place where God has prepared for each and every one of us. And those who have gone on before us, we will be, we will be reunited with. They, they, they have never really died. They've only moved on. Gone to a place where, where, where God and his love exist and there is no evil, there is no pain, there is no suffering. They have moved on. They've gone to a place where one day we ourselves will go. And so while he can never return to me, I will go to him and I will see him. What faith, right? What, what beautiful, 
wonderful faith that David would display and David would, would utter. This child was, was, was underneath the protective hand of God. And because of that, this child has moved on to the paradise of God, where one day I will be reunited with him. One of these days, we will all leave this world and we will go to a better place. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. <laughs> you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and lo, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. Isn't that wonderful? If you have faith in Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, then one day you'll go to be in heaven with God. When this life is over, when, this, when we are finished here upon planet Earth, we will go to be with our Lord and Savior. We will, and I, and I, I'm taking from this what David says about him and his child. I'm taking that one of these days, we will be reunited with our loved ones. And we will know them as they are. Hope. Hope and something better. This world is, is really not our home. We, make it, we make, try to make it pretty comfy, as, as comfortable as we possibly can. It's not our home. Our home awaits us. But today, while we still live, we'll live in hope of a better day, that God is leading us to a place that God would have us to be. God has never failed us. He has never stopped loving us. And he will continue to work in our lives if we will allow him to drive our lives. Let's go to the Lord and word of prayer. Yeah. 